welcome back to my channel, sports fans. Okay, let's get into this one right here. FYF Sports Debates. Chris Broussard, Stephen A. Smith, we can even say Rob Parker, Gilbert Arenas, Shannon Sharp, Nick Wright, all these buffoons that got LeBron either number one or number two in a GOAT debate. Let's see if this qualifies him to be even in the top five. How about the top ten? As we will see. Because one thing they always tell us, that Kevin Durant went to the Golden State Warriors in that those two championships do not count. Why? It's because Kevin Durant went to the Warriors and built a super team and came through. He didn't lose. Yes, they lost in, what was it, 19? But he was hurt is the difference. And I think, what was it, Clay was hurt too. But he came through on LeBron's ass. That's why they don't count his rings. That's why they say it's unfair. When do you hear the guys I just mentioned ever say when LeBron went to Miami, it was unfair. They don't say that. You know why? Because he choked in the NBA Finals two times in Miami. Because he choked, or when he went to um, Cleveland, they don't say it was unfair. Remember, Durant wasn't there until the last two finals for Cleveland. So when he went over there and played with Love and um, Kyrie, these guys were at the top of their games in the East. I would say top five players in the East at the time. We don't hear that. We don't hear it was unfair. And we don't hear, oh, 2016 ring doesn't count. Again, why don't they say these things? Because LeBron couldn't come through. He lost more than he won. So let's check this out. Because we also hear LeBron won without Wade. Won without Bosch. Won a championship without Kyrie. Won a championship without AD. So let's look at these players before LeBron and what they were doing in the NBA before they ran into LeBron James. But first, let's look at the bottom. Be before Pippen played with Michael Jordan, Pippen, zero accolades. Wow. Pau Gasol, one all-star appearance before playing with Kobe Bryant. Yikes. <laughs> Dwayne Wade, before playing with LeBron, one-time NBA champion, one-time finals MVP, Six-time All-Star, five-time All-NBA, three-time All-Defensive Team, one-time scoring champion. Woo! Yikes. How about Bosch? Five-time All-Star, one-time All-NBA. And let me tell you something. Now, we'll, we'll come back to this. In a, we'll, we'll do it right now. If Bosch never played with LeBron James, you better believe he'd be all NBA at least five times. Ray Allen, nine time all star, two time all NBA, three point champion, in. 
we know, NBA champion. Wow. You know, he won the championship in 2012. For him having <laughs> the team that he had, it wasn't good enough. Did this guy go to some fortune teller? And they rubbed the crystal ball and told LeBron, you need to go get Ray Allen. You have so many shortcomings. We can see in your future that you're going to need Ray Allen. And damn sure, <laughs> damn sure, LeBron came down in those NBA finals and LeBricked it off the front of the rim. There was Chris Bosh that threw it out to Ray Allen, saved his legacy. What a coincidence. Maybe he was going to play with Wade and went to the fortune teller. And they said, Wade, you're going to need more than that, son. You have so many shortcomings. You're going to need Bosch. Remember, this guy had the habits all of his career going to get other teams, number one franchise players in pairs. Not one. Not a rebounder. Come on, Dennis Robin. Not a defender. Come on, Ron Harper. I think Ron Harper, was he already on that team when Jordan came in 95? Yes, he was. So Jordan didn't even have a hand in that. Jordan didn't have a hand in who coach. Only thing Jordan had a hand in was Dennis Rodman. Just a rebounder. Wasn't a number one French by uh wasn't a number one French can you say it, franchise player of another team. And at the time wasn't. And I think was about to be out of the NBA. So let's move on. These guys weren't enough that he had in Miami. He couldn't stay for the long run after he got stomped out, got blown out in two NBA finals. He had to move on because he couldn't carry these guys. Once they couldn't carry him, he couldn't carry them. So he had to move on. Right? Just like in Cleveland when he lost the first, when he left, they could not, they could no longer carry LeBron James, right? Because the star needs to come through at the end of the game. He couldn't come through against Boston or Orlando. It's okay when he's blowing teams out, but when it comes down to those last shots, last minutes of the game, your team can never, no longer carry you. Now you have to be the man. And he could never be that in Cleveland at the end of those games, in the playoffs. Or the finals. So he goes back home. To somebody else's home. This is this is Kyrie's home now. He's the star. He got drafted. They went to the bottom of the pit. Because LeBron left. They went from winning 60 games. Had the best uh, record in the NBA. Back to back seasons. With a bunch of nobodies. Again. He's telling you how sorry the whole entire NBA era was. When he played in 2009, 2010, that he would have the number one seed in back to back seasons in the entire NBA playing with a bunch of nobodies. So the whole NBA is weak. It's a weak era. That's what LeBron is telling you. That's what his fans are telling you because he played with nobodies. That's like Jordan having the best record in the entire NBA in 86, 87 or 88 in 89 playing with a bunch of nobodies. You guys then would say the NBA was weak. <laughs> These guys, uh, they, they put their foot in their mouth so many times. They destroy themselves all the time. The LeBron fans do. So he goes to another man's house. LeBron James. It's Kyrie's home. And he begs Kyrie, man, I, I need to come back home, man. It's like you left your wife and you come back. And you begging another man for your wife back after you left. You left the house. You left the children. You left your responsibilities. And then he asked Kyrie, can he bring some more help? So many shortcomings. He needs to bring even more help. Kyrie, I can help you be a winner. 
but I need to bring another. Well, let's just say this. Kyrie, the number one franchise player of Cleveland, you're on my home, bro. And I'm asking you, can I come back home? After you already made the all-star team two times, you've been an all-star MVP, rookie of the year, three-point contest champion, and the number one overall draft pick. Kyrie says yes. And then he says, LeBron says, but I need some more help, bro. I need to bring Kevin Love. Toronto, I mean, Minnesota's number one draft pick and number one franchise player in the top five player at the dawn, even in the West. Kevin Love is coming out the West where big boys play. Kevin Love, three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA, most improved player, rebound leader, three-point contest winner. Wow. This guy is a better force than LeBron. When you're a rebound leader in a three-point contest winner, and you averaging 25 and 10? Do you ever see LeBron win a, <laughs> win a rebound contest? I mean, win, uh, be a rebound leader? No, sir. Remember, 27 and 7. 27, 7, and 7. He's not going to get you 10 rebounds. This guy is lazy. Charles Barkley averaged 10 rebounds at 6'4". Yes, they listed him at 6'6". Six, six. He's not 6'6". Six, six. No way. If I'm not mistaken, Jason Kidd averaged seven rebounds. And Jason Kidd is only like 6'4". 6'4", 6'5". Going to play with other teams' number one franchise players. Two at a time. In top five to no more the top eight players in the league at the time. What do you see here? Maybe except for Wade. So far, we have seen a guy that traded defense. I mean, traded offense. Hold on. Yeah, traded defense for offense. He went to go get offensive players. And sacrifice his defense. That's why when the LeBron fans always tell you, and they'll put up these, these they'll put up a ridiculous meme talking about Michael Jordan had all these all NBA defensive players in the nineties. That's right, because he did not sacrifice defense for offense. He was the offense. Michael Jordan was the offense. LeBron is no offensive player. He had years and years to work on his offensive skills. Kobe Bryant was shooting a brick fest when he came into the league. He was not a good shooter. He understood the game. At times, he wasn't a, a great shooter at the foul line. In spite of playing with Shaq, this guy went out there and worked on his shooting. And became the greatest shooting guard, the second greatest shooting guard behind Michael Jordan. Don't tell me how this guy shot 45%. He played in a slower pace era. Go see what Michael Jordan's um, shooting percentage was from 96 on. It was no longer 50%. 48, 47. Some NBA finals, 43, 45. You're getting less possessions. LeBron James did not want to work on his game. He's lazy. Remember, it took this guy until his seventh season to shoot 50% from the field for a season. For one season. His 14th season until he shot 50% overall for his career. 
a guy who shoots, depending on what year it was, 60 to 70 percent of his shots in the paint. It's ridiculous. And they talking about Kobe Bryant. And what happened was, once he started building these super teams, he started taking less shots. Before that, he had to take a lot of shots. He had to take 20 or more attempts a game, which kept his field goal percentage down. Under 50%. Once he started getting these um, players like, or well, the super teams, he started shooting less. 18 attempts, 17 attempts, and they were more drives, layups, and dunks. That's why when he went to Miami, all of a sudden, from then on, he started shooting 50% the rest of his career, 50% plus. Before that, nope. So let's get into this one. AD, six-time All-Star, wow. Three-time All-NBA, three-time All-NBA defensive first, three-time blocks leader, NBA All-Star Game MVP. <laughs> wow. Could you imagine Jordan playing with a guy like this? Off A, a, a two-way player. A great two-way player. And LeBron done ruined this guy's career, for real. If this guy wasn't playing with LeBron, easily, by now... I don't know, season ago, two seasons ago, this guy would have been putting up monster numbers, like 30 and 12 with about two, three blocks. This guy had to sacrifice his game. This guy would be a monster. We see glimpses of it all the time. Man, AD always hurt. They don't practice. They don't practice. They go out and play basketball on just, we're we just going to entertain the fans. We're going to play on our ability and skill. We're not going to practice. I'm LeBron James. That's why all his teammates eventually, they always get hurt. Talk about some context. See, when people talk and they can't actually show you what's going on, the LeBron fans and these people, you really don't know how deep it is. Even if I was to come on here and I would just be talking with no evidence, it won't be that deep. It would be deep, but you'd be like, man, okay, he's just saying this. Dang, that's crazy. But when you actually look at this, and they're, they're had the nerve to talk about other people, like the 80s Lakers, the 80s Celtics, um, other players, most of these teams, the Bulls, they were built organically. Or they added a free agent. There's nothing wrong with adding a free agent. But you're jumping team to team, getting other teams, number one franchise players that were top Five to ten at the time, and at the peak of their powers, and rearranging the whole team. Some of those teams had other teams, maybe a number two or a number three option. Man, a lot of people is getting paid off in our clutch sports land to lie for this guy. The numbers in the NBA history don't lie. Imagine if they brought this up. I don't know. First take. Any of these shows. The LeBron fans will be appalled. Because nobody ever did this. Yes, other players play with great players. But not like this. They didn't play with other players that had great resumes like this. Unless they was like old. Like Pippen went to the Rockets. Or Barkley went to the Rockets. All these. And the King played. These dudes was old. The big three. They was old. The big three uh, Celtics, 2008, these dudes were old. And they showed it by LeBron getting the number one seed over them two years in a row, 09, 2010. It was, they couldn't even get an MVP over LeBron. This was a super team. Supposedly. So you guys tell me what you think, man. Is LeBron disqualified out of the top 75? How was he winning MVPs on this super team in Miami with these guys, with these accolades? Tell me what you think.